freshman at Ogallala High School. And this poem is titled Eyes. Eyes. Watching, waiting, expecting, just daring me to make a mistake. Every step I take, every syllable, every blink, they're watching, waiting, hoping for just one mess up. As I walk to the drinking fountain to simply fill up a water bottle, I feel the eyes glaring at me, I feel them burning holes in my unfashionable clothes. Standing in the lunch line, talking to a stranger, walking in front of the student section, are they seeing what I see? Are they looking at me at all? I can only imagine they're looking at all of my imperfections, the bump on the bridge of my nose, my uneven eyebrows, the pudginess on my stomach, the way my face looks when it's resting. Even when I'm sleeping, when my mind should be completely at peace, it is impossible for all these eyes to be watching me, yet it is all of these watching, judging, staring eyes. Late at night, I sit looking into his deep, dark eyes, darker than the mascara around my own, darker than the crow sitting on the power line looking for another body to scavenge upon. This time, my eyes are the ones watching, focusing, examining. I see those tempting brown eyes drawing closer, and suddenly my head starts filling with thoughts. What if I'm annoying, hideous, fat, embarrassing, life-ruining, not enough. This is when I realize that I am so scared of those eyes and the thoughts the skull under them holds. Scared they'll tear me to pieces. Scared I'll get lost in them and never want to find my way out. Those eyes are deeper than the hole Alice fell into, like the Cheshire cat appearing only when they want to, telling me I am the one who is crazy. I only wish I was dreaming like Alice when she fell into that hole. I find myself falling endlessly under the control of those watching, judging, staring eyes. I will not, cannot, let them paint them how, me, how they want me. Those eyes are always there, telling me that I am not and never will be worth anything, demanding from me every waking second be spent thinking of ways to please them. But I am not theirs. I am not their painting. I am my own freaking masterpiece, greater than the one Van Gogh, Da Vinci, or Dolly could ever paint, more intricate than the Starry Night or the Mona Lisa. I am a painting that has been splattered with the colors of life. Each paint I have felt on me is a different journey, a different obstacle. I have felt all the hues ranging from anger to passion, from joy to sorrow. People tell you that eyes are the window to the soul, but these eyes never were truly looking at my soul. Thank you.